It's nice to see you all here. Uh, my name is Carol Kent, and I'm standing in for Connie Stoll, who's unable to be here tonight. Tonight, you're very lucky. And some of you have, have heard the Tufts group before. Uh, the Tufts opera group consists mostly of undergraduates from Tufts University. They range in age from freshmen to seniors with an occasional graduate student, uh, made up of music majors, minors, and non-majors. For many of them, this is the, their first experience with opera. And uh, by the time they graduate, they will have gained immense confidence in acting and singing opera. And I can tell you, by the time you go home tonight, you will be blown away by their talent. They're uh, directed by Carol Mustard Michael. And I did say that, didn't I? <laughs> and Tom Stump is the musical director. Thank you very much. We're always thrilled to come back to the Jake Center. You guys are one of our, if not the best, audience we sing for. Oh. We, okay, am I lying? Am I just saying, look, look at Paul. Okay, okay this, is, this is the first year, and I do have to talk to you all about this, because this is the first year all of them are available. And they, they, anytime they can't come, they're always like, oh, I'm going to miss the jinx. Seriously. I can't get them to come to rehearsal, but they'll come here. Okay, so that's not true. Um, so the program is the entire program we're doing. So it's a little longer than normal. So as we're going, if it's getting too long, I need, need you to start going. And we'll start cutting some of the scenes. So if it starts, I, I'm kind of being serious because I don't know how long you plan to be here. So, so having said that, let's get started. So that I don't have to talk a lot. There's synopses in the program, so that this way it'll move along. We'll just take the time to change our little set here. Um, so anytime there's two chairs together, imagine a bench, okay? Um, and imagine an elaborate set. Um, and uh, we're starting with the magic flute at the end of the entire opera. This begins the finale. And we meet the three spirits first. Um, and then Pamina comes in, who's distraught because she thinks her love, who has taken a vow of silence, just doesn't love her anymore. And the spirits convince her that's not the case. So without any further ado. Wait, wait, wait. 
now we move to coronation of Pompeia. Um, and it's nicely described in here, but I will tell you that we have updated it so that it's more like it's in an uh, English palace and there's a party going on rather than um, what's actually in the opera happening. Um, and so we see Otone first, um, and then uh, Nero and uh, Popea do come in, and then Nero leaves, leaving Otone and Popea to, um, for Popea to tell him he's being a little gnat, and she, she's not interested. And then Drusilla, who's been pining over Otone, comes in, and she says, you're always after Popea. But then within the 10 minutes that they're on stage, he loves her. So, <laughs> Popea. to merit praise except its beauty my heart my heart come or oh, come to your senses this woman longs for power and once she has it 
once she has it, then my life would be forfeit. Oh, Tom, come, oh, come to your senses. Is this, is this the end? Is this the end of all that you promised? Of your love, almost oh, perfidious, perfidious, for my heart into my tongue, and from my tongue be it scattered on the winds, the name of that Popea who enticed and betrayed my deep affections.
Tony's trouble. Um, and now we go to Deflator Mouse, where we have three individuals all talking to each other, but thinking completely different things. <laughs> each of them is going to another event this night, but none of them know that they're all going to the same event, and none of them know that they're all leaving to go to any kind of an event. So they're, they're talking to each other as if, oh, we don't want you to leave, and I, wa I want you, but they can't wait until they can get, you know, until Eichenstein leaves, till um, Adele leaves, and then her lover comes. So this is Deflator Mouse. To part is such sweet sorrow, such pain and such despair. Who shall I face tomorrow without my husband there? With anguish and misgiving, I watch my love depart. How shall I go? Thank <laughs> you. 
now we go back to a little more realism. Uh, we're in the street scene. This is Hell's Kitchen in the 1940s. Um, and we meet Rose and Sam. And uh, Sam definitely knows he wants Rose. Rose isn't quite sure what she wants. And if you research the opera, you'd know why, because her parents, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of turmoil where they're living. Um, and there's a lot of um, suffering. And so we, we see Sam's, um, Sam break out and tell you about his anguish. And we also hear uh, Rose talk about what she's been through, all the rumors that, about her mom maybe having an affair, which she's actually not having. It turns out that the father winds up killing the mother at the end of the opera. It's really not a happy story. Um, but here, uh, Sam is trying to show Rose that there, there could be a happiness amongst all this sadness. Uh, that dirty bum! I'd like to kill him! It's all right, Sam. He's nothing but a big tough. You know that. Why should you pay any attention to a loafer like him? You probably just think I'm a coward. Why? Because he happens to be bigger and stronger than you are? Ten years from now, he'll still be a taxi driver. And you, why, you'll be so far above him, you won't even remember he's alive. He'll never get anywhere. Of course you will. A boy with your brains, graduating from college with honors and all that. What good does it do you if nobody ever looks at you? Nobody cares if you exist. I care, Sam. I wonder if you really do. Yes, I do. You're the best friend I have in the world. Sam, can I, can I ask you something? I wouldn't dream of asking anybody but you. What is it, Rose? Do you think it's true? What they've been saying about my mother? I guess it is then. Oh, they were talking here before it. I couldn't take it anymore. Oh God, why do we go on living in this sewer? What can I do, Sam? You see, my father's always been sort of strict. Sort of making you want to seize up when all you really want to be is kind and loving. That's the whole trouble, I guess. My mother never really had anyone to really love her. And only with the way things are now, I Everybody's spying and gossiping. Oh, I wish I knew what to do. I wish there was some way I could help you, Rose. But you do help me, Sam. Just by being kind and sympathetic and talking things over with me. You keep me from getting that feeling that I'm all alone in the world.
some of the colors that you'll see. So, Thomas Stumpf's Eurydice. Thank you. 
have let me wait. I had grown from listlessness into peace. If you had let me rest with the dead, I had forgot you and the past.
Peace and Casilda. And they're, of course, lovers, and they shouldn't be because they're of different classes. But guess what you find out in the end? They're of the same class. And he's actually the prince that uh, she thinks she's betrothed to marry anyway. And so it turns out all great in the end. But here, in this moment, this is when they have see each other for the first time uh, in a long time, and then she tells him the news, I'm actually engaged to someone else. Collect a few. <laughs> 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 
Ah, Casilda, <laughs> you were to me as the sun is to the earth. A quarter of an hour ago? A about that. <laughs> but to think, but for this miserable discovery, you would have been my own for life. Through life and death. A quarter of an hour ago? A quarter of an hour ago. <laughs> Greedily, my thirsty ears would have drunk the golden melody of those sweet words. About a quarter, well, well, now it's about twenty minutes. Yes, about that. In such matters, one cannot be too precise. Oh, our love, once so full of life, is but a silent, solemn memory. Must it be so, Casilda? Luis, it must be so. So time, the time forever gone, oh, oh, with me. It was no crime to love but thee alone, oh, oh, with me. One heart, one life, one soul, one name, one goal. Each in the fight the devil. And um, they don't think he should go. They don't know he's the devil, but they, don't, they have a bad vibe. Um, and so in this scene, you see them trying to convince him not to go, but he's convinced he has to.
So this is really ridiculous. This is Cinderella. We got the two stepsisters. We got the prince who's dressed up as a beggar. Uh, and then we got Cinderella. And they're really making her work for it. And the prince gets a, he's decided to go dressed up as a beggar and see what's out there in the countryside. And this is what he discovers. <laughs> I just want to mention that we have Olivia Montgomery here playing three of the scenes. This is her last scene that she's playing. So student piano, she's a sophomore at Tufts. And she also plays the Bangladesh and Taylor.
and for your great reactions. It really makes a difference. When we go to Dissler, often they can't hear, so the hall at Tufts, they can't hear the audience reacting and it affects their performance. So they really, they really love it here. So thank you for having us. Thank you.